And here's a better illustration. I guess this might make it easier for you to see what the mortise and tendon actually looks like. Uh, this is the side profile of the body, and that's the neck over there. And this is the tendon after it's been cut out. And the body will actually have a cavity on the inside of it over the top right up here. This is the top view. Here's the cavity, and here's the tendon. And it fits together there. Um, one key factor that I um, mentioned is that the neck also is angled back at about four degrees. Um, this is to ensure both the fact that um, that there's tension across the strings and that the strings are not parallel to the neck because if the strings are parallel to the neck, whenever you touch a string down at any point of the neck, it'll be touching all the way across the neck and it'll cause a lot of buzzing. So for that reason, you have to angle the neck back and then the neck actually curves up from the body so that you can keep the strings off as you play it. Here's an actual physical picture of the mortise in the body. And you can see as I was working on the body, here are some pickup cavities where I was actually going to place the pickups, and you can see where I drilled holes for the bridge. Um, so the neck and head. This um, was pretty fun, actually, designing the head. I got to find the edges of the neck, first of all. I had to narrow it down to a point where um, it was actually playable, because the original blank of wood was fairly wide, and it wouldn't provide a very good neck. Um, and then a truss rod. I'm going to talk about the truss rod now. Um, the truss rod is essentially a metal bar that goes through the center of the neck of the guitar and it's used to bend the neck. Because the neck itself, when it's under tension from the strings, bends actually a little bit from the tension of the strings. And so you use this to straighten out the neck. Um, then some other steps that I went through were uh, <coughs> gluing the head plates for headstock and bandsawing the basically the rough headstock shape that I have on the guitar now. So here's a picture after I've routed the truss rod cavity. I actually used the router to run a cavity all the way down the length of the neck. This is the full neck length right here. And then I laid this metal rod right here in there, which will later be embedded under the fretboard. Um, and here's my headstock. This is the rough idea that I traced out for my headstock. And uh, I was here. This is actually clamped together to hold it in place so that I can bandsaw the rough profile around it. And there's a little guy up in the top corner that are actually band sawing it. Here's another picture of the band saw. And then the neck finishing. This was actually potentially the most time consuming um, process throughout the entire building process because the maple itself on the neck is a very, very hard wood. That's actually my hand there rasping the back of the neck. Um, this was fun to an extent, other than the fact that it was really time consuming because it allows me to shape the guitar as a like preferential to my playing style. Because I can shape it down to whatever thickness I want and whatever shape that I want that I like the feel of against my thumb essentially with my playing. And that's a wood rasp that I'm using there. And I actually worked down from a wood rasp to a wood file to sandpaper so that as I finish the neck. And uh, after I had the rough blank done for the neck, I went and I worked on the actual machine heads, the tuning pegs, where the strings actually join at the top of the head. And um, I actually have to shape the nut. The nut is a very important part, as I said, in the transfer of resonance through the guitar, because there's, it's a critical resonating point, because it's one of the few points that the strings are actually pinched against the guitar. Um, and it actually involves a lot of shaping. There, there actually have to be slots filed into the nut for the strings to fit into. Um, and that's what I had to do. Some actual files of the And now here's some pictures actually of my final product. After I had uh, mounted my pickups and my electronics, my strings, this is actually a picture of the bridge. This is the front of the body of the actual guitar there. And here's some of the electronics up here. I'll show you a few pictures of the guitar itself from different angles. That's the headstock. These are the machine heads and the tuning pegs after we drill holes for them. And uh, here's the nut. You can see maybe a little bit where I slotted it with a file for the strings to fit into so that they don't slide back and forth across the neck. And this is the truss rod right here. And this is where you actually physically crank the truss rod with a hex nut so that you can bend the neck and bow the neck as you need to. And this is a rough picture of the electronics cavity after I actually soldered all the electronics within the cavity. The blue thing right there is actually a 9-volt battery. I wrapped it up in tape so that it would be a circuit if any Metal, metal make contact with it. I don't want any flashes or fires or anything. So. <laughs> and there's a rough picture of the entire body of the guitar.
and I covered this up with wax paper so that things were falling out of it. I'm eventually going to cover it with a piece of plexiglass or something as a backflip for it. And now I will play the guitar and show you that it does in fact make sound. As it is currently, the guitar doesn't actually have threads, so it makes it difficult to play any specific sound or any specific cohesive song. But Thank you. 